So in this video, guys, we're going to look at graphs of motion, and what we're going to focus on specifically is interpreting graphs of motion in terms of the direction that the object's traveling in and how we can get such things such as the speed of the object, which we talked about in class already, and um, the velocity of the object, and we could actually calculate the distance that the object has traveled. So to start off with, let's look at a position versus time graph, so shown here. So in this case, we're going to look at this graph, and we will have our position over here. We'll call that position x um, meters, okay? And time is arranged along this axis here. So I have, you know, approximately every second. I know it's not a perfect scale here, but pretend like it is, and we have approximately every second marked out. So within the first second, um, the object's going to go to five meters, it's going to stay at five meters for the next two seconds, and it's going to go back to zero to the start position essentially, and then it's going to go to negative five, stay there for a little bit, and then go back to the start position. So the thing to realize with a position versus time graph is that when the object is above the origin, Okay, so whenever you have the graph above this origin, that means that the object has moved forward. Okay, so the object has moved forward, and whenever it's below that, it is behind where it starts. Okay, so that's the first. So any of these points over here, it's behind where it started from, and all of these points, it is ahead of where it started from, okay? The other thing is looking at the slope. Now we talked about in class how the slope gives us the speed of the object. And it also tells you whether the object is moving forwards or backwards, okay? So for instance, if we have a positive slope, so a positive slope right here, a positive slope means that the object has a positive speed and it's moving forward. Okay, so this is a position versus time graph. So, so when we have a positive slope, it's moving forward. When we have a zero slope, like here, zero slope, that means that it has stopped. Okay, so wherever you see a zero slope on a position versus time graph, it means that the object has stopped moving. And when you have a negative slope, okay, so a negative slope, what this means is that it's moving backwards. Okay, so that may be an error here, be consistent. So there, it's moving backwards. So wherever, so you can go through this whole thing, and wherever you see a positive slope, like right here, and also right here, it's moving in the forward direction, or in the positive direction. And wherever we see a negative slope, like through this whole area here, it's moving backwards. And where we have a zero slope, then we know that it's stopped. Okay, so that's how you can interpret a position versus time graph. Now, the next one we're going to look at is a velocity versus time graph, and this is going to be a little bit different as far as interpretation. The main differences will be what, what, what indicates that the point has stopped, that the object has stopped, what indicates that it's moving forward, and what indicates that it's moving backwards. So those are the main things that I want you guys to be able to get from these graphs, whether it's position versus time, or velocity versus time, I want you to tell me, is it moving forward or backward, or is it stopped, okay? So, looking at this velocity versus time graph, now it's the same shape, I know it's the same shape, but now, instead of having position, I'm gonna make this my velocity, and so we'll have meters per second for our velocity over here, and we have time along here. And like I said, it looks the same, but what's happening here is that this entire section, so from here all the way over to here, okay, so this entire section, it's moving forward. Even though it has a negative slope here, it still has a positive velocity. A positive velocity means it's moving in the forward direction. It has a negative slope because it's moving, for, it's moving forward but slowing down, okay, so a negative slope on the velocity graph means it's slowing down, but it's still moving forward. So this entire section, it's moving forward. In fact, even though this is flat here, all this is saying is that it's 
moving at a constant speed. Okay, it's not stopped. And the position versus time graph, this indicated that the object was stopped. Now in a velocity versus time graph, a flat line indicates that it's moving at a constant velocity. The only position where it's stopped at is where its velocity is zero. And so right there where it crosses the x-axis and right there where it crosses the x-axis and right here, these are where it has stopped. Okay, and it's just momentarily. So you can understand this is it's moving forward but slowing down and then it stops. And then once it has a negative velocity, so from here all the way through here, it's moving backwards. Okay, so this is where this whole area is moving backwards. So where this line, like this whole section, I have a negative velocity, which means I'm moving in the negative direction. So this is actually mean that it's moving in a negative direction. It's going faster and faster and faster in the negative direction. And again, this flat line on velocity versus time graph doesn't mean it's stopped. It means it's moving at a constant speed, but going backwards because it's negative. And then we have a positive slope here, but it's still moving backwards. So it's moving backwards, but it's getting slower and slower and slower until it finally it stops again. Okay, we'll go over this in class. These velocity versus time graphs can be a little tricky, but I want you, I want to introduce this idea to you right now. And then um, in another week or so, when we talk about acceleration, we're going to look at these graphs again and see how we can get acceleration from that. But for right now, like I said, I want you guys just to know on both position versus time and velocity versus time, where is it moving forward, where is it moving backwards, and where is it stopped on these graphs. Okay. Now it is possible to do calculations with graphs of motion, and so I have a position versus time graph here and a velocity versus time graph here. And again, we've talked about position versus time a little bit, but the equation for constant velocity motion is the change in position is equal to the velocity times the change in time, okay? So let's keep this in mind. So here, as we said, this is a constant slope Okay, and so the slope of a position versus time graph gives me the speed of the object. Okay, so I could ask you guys, possibly, if you had numbers on here, I could ask you how fast the object is moving in this area, and you would get the slope of the graph, and you would tell me how fast the object is moving. And, of course, here it stopped. And then if we have a curvy line, we can find out an average speed if we just take two points say maybe those two points in this line that would be the you know the slope is the average speed okay so this is my average speed but maybe i want to know the speed at a specific point and so what i'll do is i'll just take one point and then you find a tangent line so remember tangent line just barely touches that curve okay so you found tangent line and then the slope of the tangent line so the slope of tangent gives me the what's called the instantaneous speed. Instantaneous. Yeah. Okay. The instantaneous speed. Okay. And a lot a lot of times people say velocity here. All right. So the main thing you can you can get from position versus time graph, you can get position obviously, but you can get speeds from this. Now, velocity versus time graph, this is one where it's I'm moving at a constant velocity the whole time because that's what we're looking at right now. But what, what, what I want to point out to you guys is that by reading this, you know, it's stopped here because it's going at zero velocity. But from for this one second, what I can say is it's moving at three meters per second. And then I can say it's doing that for one second. So what I can do is I can calculate like from in this area right here, I can say that it has moved three meters. And I could do that for each section. You know, I, I could do this, I forgot to put a number here, but if there's a number here, I could say, I mean, I could determine how far, what distance it's traveled in this, and I can travel, what distance it's traveled this, by taking the velocity times the time it travels that velocity to give me um, position. So what I can do, is I can add up the change in position for each part, add it all together, and I can get my net displacement that way.
Okay, so that's how I can use velocity versus time graphs. I can do calculations with those. So we'll practice this in class, guys. So I'm going to have you guys move around and try to reproduce some graphs um, with emotion detectors. And then we'll do some calculations and some you know homework type problems dealing with these graphs. So um, you know, hope you guys took good notes. If you have any questions, um, please let me know. And again, we'll practice this in class.